Hello again, friends, and welcome back. My name is Oscar Montesiga. I'm a certified wine and spirits instructor for the International Wine and Spirits Guild. And thanks for joining me here at the Booze Library at Uncork Vintage Academia. And today I'm going to bring you a cocktail that is uh, basically involved in mystery. Um, I'm talking about the corn and oil. So I don't know if you've heard of corn and oil or if you've had a corn and oil, but today I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it. And unfortunately, there's not a whole lot to talk about history wise because it's a very conflicting uh, cocktail with a lot of, uh, again, obscure history. So I'm bringing you a corn and oil today because I actually recently joined uh, a meetup um, happy hour uh, on Zoom, a virtual happy hour, thanks to the Austin Rum Society and thanks to Mike Hooker for hosting us. Really appreciate it. And I got to try this cocktail that I've never heard of before, never tried it before, of course. And it is a conflicting story and it is a conflicting cocktail to make because there's a couple of variations. So really quick to tell you more about what I know, and this is based on some simple search plus the conversation we had during the, the meetup. Um, the corn and oil is a cocktail that is reported to have been originated in Barbados. And it tells us that originally the cocktail might have been made with a brandy base, more particularly likely cognac. So it's a cognac cocktail blended with falernum and falernum is a liqueur uh, also originated in Barbados and falernum is typically a rum based liqueur that is spiced and flavored with lime and pepper or ginger a few other spices and you can find the liqueur version version that is alcoholic or you can make a falernum syrup without alcohol and other than that it's a pretty simple cocktail it has those two base main ingredients plus angostura bitters aromatic bitters uh, but I'm gonna give you also a variation. So besides that, the story tells us that eventually from brandy base it switched to uh, to rum, uh, being a rum-based cocktail from Barbados, of course, Barbados aged um, blended rum. Um, and we don't really know where the came for the corn and oil came from. Uh, part of the story tells us that somebody might have given somebody a drink and they called it whatever the name was in their uh, Bajan dialect in Barbados and the person receiving the drink couldn't understand or misinterpreted, mistranslated and the corn and oil kind of name just evolved from there or just kind of stuck from there and we don't really know because there's obviously no corn in the cocktail and it does have an oily texture possibly but other than that I also find another story that potentially it was named after a verse in the Bible and if you find Deuteronomy 11.14, I uh, found this quote that says, I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain that thou may gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine, uh, thine oil. Um, so obviously in the Middle East, an ancient biblical text and time, they were talking about very likely olive oil, wine from grapes and corn is a generic term uh, for grain so they could have been talking about any grain whether it was wheat rye barley um, but it is uh, an ancestral word of uh, refer referring to a generic uh, grain harvest so i found that verse and i don't know if it relates to the cocktail or not i don't know why they would mix corn and oil and leave out the wine so again it's conflicting and who knows so Today I'm going to bring you this cocktail that basically um, you can build in the glass. You don't have to shake or stir. But basically you are going to need a short glass, a tumbler, a bucket, an old-fashioned glass. And I will serve this on the rocks or a rock. But I'm going to choose to, uh, instead, um, instead of building it, I'm going to stir it. And that is where the conflicting stories kind of begin. That you can you can um, build it in the glass, you can stir it, or you can shake it, whatever is your pleasure. So first, I'm gonna start with um, half an ounce of falernum, half an ounce of falernum liqueur, that goes into the steering glass, and I'm using John Taylor's Velvet Falernum. Uh, in general, and this is after the conversation also we had in the meetup group, 
um, can be a little bland, this particular brand of falernum. There's nothing wrong with it, but it could be more exciting. So I chose to aromatize my falernum with um, extra added flavors, in including coriander, cardamom, peppercorn, and uh, Indian long pepper, just to give it more complexity. So half an ounce of falernum went in there. Today I'm using Dooley's 12-year blended Barbados rum. You're gonna need two ounces of that. Healthy, do uh, healthy dose of rum. And this is a, pretty much a spirit forward cocktail. And then the next ingredient is a healthy dose of Angostura bitters. I'm gonna use four ounces. And Angostura bitters are the most famous or most recognized aromatic bitters in the world. They're from Trinidad and Tobago. Very rootsy, barky, um, aromatic bitters. That is the base for this particular cocktail. Three ingredients, blended rum, falernum, and angostura bitters. I'm gonna put ice in here and stir it. I'm gonna stir to two reasons. Obviously one to chill it, the next to dilute it a little bit, right? See the nice uh, film frost. I can feel the cocktail is well chilled. So I'm gonna serve this um, after straining. And for the most part, that is it. You could serve it like this: three ingredients: the falernum, the rum, and the angostura bitters on a rock. You could stir it. You could shake it. You could build it in the glass. The next step, in case you wanted to have a little bit of variance. Uh, you could do a little bit of a lime wedge and let people, your guests, um, you know, squeeze squeeze the lime and get a little bit of juice in there. I don't know that I want to do that, but I am going to express a fresh peel of lime to brighten up and blend a little bit, bridge the flavors of the falernum. So I'm going to express the oils there. And lastly, I'm going to garnish with a dehydrated lime wedge. But I will also use a floater of Demerara, Demerara rum, um, a high proof rum. There you have it, the corn and oil. Cheers. It's a pretty simple rum forward um, cocktail. It is boozy, but I think if you have a drinker that may want to try rum but doesn't like rum uh, neat or straight, um, then the little bit of sugar from the falernum may help them make a rounder and slightly more complex cocktail. So there you have it. Variation number one, corn and oil, stirred, no lime, uh, no lime uh, squeeze, but just an expression of the lime oils. Um, and that is it for that cocktail. Uh, next up, I'm gonna give you a variation of that, making it a little bit more complex and also something that I really enjoy. This cocktail, you know, it's okay, it's not something I wanna order again, it's not necessarily super exciting, unless I'm in the mood for something super simple. Um, but next, I'm gonna use the same base. I'm gonna use, uh, which I already have here in my steering glass. I have already one fourth of an ounce of falernum, two ounces of rum. I have four dashes of angostura bitter. But next, I'm gonna use half an ounce of orja or an um, orjat syrup. And the orjat will make it cloudy and milky. Orja is a syrup that is usually made with almond or apricot kernels, um, usually either some citric juice, either citric. Um, lemon or orange, uh, orange blossom water could be in there. It could have a base of cognac or brandy. Um, 
it's a nice smooth round uh, almond type flavor on the um, on the syrup. And lastly, the last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab my bar spoon and I'm mixing in about half half a um, bar spoon of molasses, black molasses, raw molasses on Soford. Basically the molasses that your grandma should have been using. Uh, but that's it. This cocktail is served the same way. I'm gonna put it into a rocks glass after I chill it. So again, I didn't really do much changing other than I added oja to the basic recipe and a little bit of molasses. I'm gonna chill it and stir it. I don't wanna shake it necessarily, but you can. Same thing, I'm gonna straight it, straight it straight into that rock. And you can see how, how different they look with just the addition of orja, which is a variance. If you look online, some recipes include orja, some don't. My only personal addition was a dollop, really a smidgen of uh, molasses. And lastly, also my tw twist on this, I'm gonna uh, float over the spoon that I use for the molasses. Just a floater of Demerara um, overproof rum from, from Guyana. And I don't know if you can see this, but over that creamy beige, khaki, pale, uh, creamy base, you have a layer on top of a, a thick brownish oil-like uh, layer. That That is why I think this is very, visually uh, an appealing corn and oil cocktail by name uh, proper and I'm gonna skip the lime I don't need the garnish on this because my garnish is that floater on top uh, differentiating the two layers of the creamy orjad based corn and oil plus the demerara overproof uh, rum cheers And that is so, so, so delicious and so different, so intriguing. I've never tasted anything like it. And I don't know exactly what it is, but I think either it may be a combination of the oja and the molasses that it somehow reminds me of cornbread. There is somehow a corn influence on this cocktail versus this one that is very, very rum forward. And And there's really nothing that reminds me of corn. Um, if anything, this is a little brighter because it has the express lime peel. Uh, but again, pretty straightforward. I guess that is a great uh, aperitif cocktail. You could pair that with a meal as well. Versus this one that... It is, I would say, more a three-course pairable cocktail. Whether you want to do it an aperitif uh, as a meal or as a digestif and a closer because the orjat makes it a little creamier and rounder and I could see how that would go well with um, something like a creme brulee or a, a panna cotta, some kind of custard versus this one I want to either have it before a meal or enjoy it with something kind of like jerky chicken you know some kind of nice rich meal so um, there you have it folks i hope you enjoy this video and i hope you learned something about corn and oil i sure did while talking to the austin drum society folks it was very insightful and see how people uh, prefer theirs because some people actually hated the lime in it if they tried it with a lime some people enjoyed it with the lime some people um, sh sh shook it instead of steering it um, so you can make your homemade falernum if you want you can have a few different variations of rum, whether you're using straight Barbados or something like um, 
blackstrap molasses, which is not really a legal recognized thing, but some, some makers may do it. So again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed everything. And let me know in your comments if you have tried this or once you do, please leave a comment, see what you think. Thanks for watching. Cheers.